Okay, so we're going to be, uh, in this video we're going to be talking about uh, forces. Um, in particular, just a quick introduction into how forces work and how, how we'll deal with them in this class. Um, the most important uh, thing that we're going to deal with and the thing we're going to spend most time with is, is Newton, what's called Newton's second law, um, which is force equals mass times acceleration. Okay. Um, this is a pretty straightforward law. Uh, there are a couple important things I want you to notice. Um, one is that the force and the acceleration are vectors, uh, so that means that they have direction um, uh, and magnitude. Um, it turns out we're never, you know, just like we did with our our, um, our trajectory problems, we're never going to actually deal with um, a bunch of uh, directions at once. Basically, what we're going to do is we're always going to solve things separately. So generally, what we do is we break this up into an x component. and a y component. All right, and that's what generally how we're going to solve uh, any type of problem. Um, the, the usefulness of this is that what, what it can give us is it can give us for any, um, for any force we might provide, it can give us the acceleration. We know from before that if we have the acceleration, uh, we can find things like uh, the velocity and the, the, the displacement and things like that using our 1D equations for motion. So kind of from the forces we can kind of find everything else about the motion of the, this thing. It also helps us really start to understand why things happen. If you think about before what we were doing with the, with the, um, the other motion stuff, we were kind of just dealing with what was happening. We were explaining the acceleration, the displacement, the velocity, trajectory, things, all things like that, but we weren't, exp we weren't dealing with why that actually was happening. Um, in this case, uh, we're not going to actually start dealing with why things happen, basically. What, what is the cause of, of uh, different motions and, and why different things happen? This is really what I think of as kind of the actual beginning of physics, with the rest of it kind of an introduction to how to think physically, if that makes any sense. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to have to do is figure out a way to figure out what the forces are. Now, if you think about, well, what, what are the kinds of forces that we have? Um, I'll just list a few of them. If you think about it, we have um, what are called contact forces. These are things that are, are um, created by contact. It's, it's a pretty straightforward idea. Um, things that are contact forces are a uh, thing like friction, uh, which you've probably heard of before. Um, uh, normal forces. Um, normal force is just another way to say uh, pushing forces, basically. Um, they, they often called normal forces, but uh, uh, pushing forces is fine as well. Um, and that's uh, the only ones I can think of as far as contact forces go right now. Uh, there's also, of course, uh, things like um, uh, there's also um, uh, let's say um, uh, drag, um, so from air, from contact with air, things like that, and other stuff. You know, you have water, things like that. Um, there's also long range forces. The most familiar one to us and the one that we're going to be using the most in this class is gravity. All right, that's, and in our case, normally the gravity is coming from the Earth on our object. It's kind of the most common one. Um, the, other, uh, the other one is that we're going to um, see will be electro electrostatic or electromagnetic. Um, but again, those um, those really won't come into play in this class. We're really going to study those more in, in 104, so you don't have to worry too much about that. As I'm thinking about there's one last contact force that I missed, which is uh, tension. Uh, tension is kind of the opposite of the normal force, um, where normal force is something where you're pushing on something. A tension force is where you're pulling on it. So those are kind of all the forces that we have um, that can actually create, uh, the, the, basically it's the ways that things are interacting. Um, to, to start to figure out how to deal with these, what we're going to do is we're going to draw what are called free body diagrams. All right, And a free body diagram is simply a way of showing all the forces that exist on a specific object. Um, so it's just the forces on one object. Okay, all the forces on it, and that'll help us to figure out, basically use uh, these equations over here 
um, to actually figure out what, what's going to happen to that thing. So let me just show you over here on this mug. That's why I have a picture of my mug up here, in case you're wondering. Let's just start thinking about some of the forces that are on it. The great news is there's one force that almost always exists um, in just about any problem uh, that, that you can deal with, um, which is uh, the force of gravity. All right, and so if we look at this, force of gravity generally comes from what's called the center of mass of the object. And you see what I do, I basically draw an arrow to indicate the, f the direction that the force is going. Again, because it's gravity, it's pointing towards the center of the Earth. In our case, uh, since the center of Earth always basically just points down to the ground. Um, so we have that force of gravity that's, pull it, that's, that's, that's trying to pull it down. Um, we know that the mug isn't moving anywhere, it's just sitting on the table. Um, so it turns out that there's another force that's happening which is this thing called the normal force. And again, that's the, just the force of the table pushing up on the mug. Um, it, that's what keeps the mug from going anywhere. Of course, if I got rid of the table, the, table would, the, the mug would fall down. Um, the table is providing this normal force, this pushing force, where it's pushing up on the mug with the same amount of force that uh, the, the gravity is pulling down. And if I were to go ahead and try to write one of my... Um, uh, so that, that's it for the forces on this mug. There are no other forces on the mug. There's nothing in the x direction. Um, so if I were to write all the forces in the in the um, in the x direction, um, one important thing I didn't actually put this. This is actually the sum of all the forces. So you have to add up all the forces in each direction. So if I add up the sum, that's a, just a symbol meaning the sum. The sum of all the forces in the x direction. Well, there are no forces in the x direction. Just equal to zero, and that means um, that's mass on acceleration is equal to zero. The mass isn't zero, so we know that the acceleration is zero. Um, so oh, that's not so interesting. Um, if we also look in the y direction, we can see that there are two forces. There's the normal force, and there's gravity. Now I'm going to put a minus sign on gravity because it's pointing down. Um, and I'm using our standard coordinate system that we always use where x is positive to the right, y is positive up. Um, and that's equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Now I know, because I was in the office when I took this picture, um, that the acceleration in the y direction is also zero. It's actually not moving at all. There's no acceleration. Um, so what we find is that we can say that fn minus fg is equal to zero. Um, so let's just rewrite that. From that, we can find that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. All right, uh, which we already knew because that's why it's not moving. That's a general idea about how we do these these free body diagrams. Now, there are some um, there are some important things that uh, people often uh, do incorrectly. Um, one is that you need to make sure that you're only drawing the forces on one object. Um, so you, you uh, the object that I was interested in here was the mug. Sometimes I actually put like a little dotted line around to show that that's what I'm drawing the free body diagram of. The important thing is you don't want to do things like um, draw uh, the um, draw the force of the mug on the table. Um, so, you know, force of mug on the table. That would not be appropriate because we're doing a free body diagram of the mug, not on the table. Now I could go and do a free body diagram of the table. Um, let's, go and get rid of that. I don't want to let's go ahead and do a free body diagram of the table. All right, so here's the table. Now you might say, should I draw the mug? I'm not gonna draw the mug because again, in a free body diagram, I just wanna draw the thing that I'm drawing, um, that I'm doing the free body diagram of. Let's think about what the table is feeling. Okay, again, the table uh, is um, is feeling uh, gravity, of course. Okay, because the table has some mass to it. Um, it's also feeling the mug. Now, if you think about the, what the mug is doing, the mug is pushing down on the table with some kind of normal force. Okay. If you think about what the, what you would feel if you were holding the mug, you would feel a force pushing down on you. Uh, that's exactly what the table feels. Um, the other forces that exist, of course, is that there are some other normal forces, so I'll just call this Fn mug 
And then there's also the normal forces from the ground. Or the floor or whatever you want to call it. Alright. And that's the total of all the forces that we have. In the y direction, again, we don't have any x direction forces. Again, if I were to draw, if I were to write the equation of all the sum of forces in the y directions, I would say it was equal to F and ground plus F and ground minus F of gravity minus FG, uh, FN of the mud. Okay, oops, I think that kind of fell off there. Let's, um, let's rewrite that. Minus FG of the mud. Okay, and that will give us the um, how much the, uh, the the mug is pushing down on it. And again, we could set that equal to zero and, and solve for different things if we wanted to. Um, well, this clock is striking 12. I think that will be it for me. This is a quick introduction to how to do free body diagrams and how um, to deal with forces. Uh, hopefully, we'll do some more things in class. You can look through the book, get some other examples. Uh, but that's just a quick instruction with how we do it. And we're going to have to do this every time we do any of these forces problems. So it's a really good thing to start to get into practice. You can do a free body diagram for any object you see in all the world. Um, just uh, remember a couple of key things. One is that you want to make sure that you're doing the free body diagram of just one object at a time, that you're not drawing any forces that are on another object, and that you're very careful about making sure that you uh, deal with every single force that exists on the object in both the x and y directions. I hope that was useful to you. Um, thanks a lot, and uh, we will, uh, I will see you in class.